Uh, two announcements very quickly. It's uh, first, the lunch will be late. Do not complain to me. I have no control over lunch, but they say we will get it by 12.15. Second thing is that the rules changed a little bit since the last lecture. There was a bunch of people who were saying that they would prefer to type things in instead of just saying them. So when you get this spoon now, you have a choice. Remember this spoon? Some of you were missing. That there's this magic spoon. The person with a magic spoon, it's a very magic spoon. I mean, Claude Shannon used it. It says so, right on the spoon. So if you have Claude Shannon's spoon, you are the guy who's supposed to, oh, some visual search people did come. <laughs> ah, managed to. We got him. Okay. Except for Sunil, who dropped out, apparently. In India, yeah, I knew. It's a better place than the class. So, uh, okay, guys. So, the person with a spoon either says what the code is and it interacts with me and answers all of my questions, or he or she could stand up in front of this thing and type the code in. That's just an option for those of you who, who find it uncomfortable to say if open paren, true, close paren, do something. And if you want Emacs, you say, I want Emacs, and it will be Emacs instead of Vim. Right? So again. You know, that's that's the new suggestion. If nobody uses it, we will. Well, actually, it doesn't bother anyone. So, if you remember, we we talked about mean, and hopefully we could see mean behind me on the screen. Could we? No. Uh, and what we observed is that this sort of is the most general version of mean. Uh, the little sort of thing which I'll tell you because we will be using it time and time and time again, and it's good to know. Uh, of course, it's somewhat inconvenient to pass compare when you actually want to use total ordering. And total ordering should always be designated with a glyph less than. It's a good glyph for total ordering. So. Uh, Therefore, there should be a version of mean which doesn't take that, the one which we wrote first. And uh, the spoon goes. The spoon goes. Give it. Pass the spoon. OK. So uh, now uh, we need to come up with a version of that. How would we default the comparison? Do you know how? You don't know how. OK, let's think about it. I suggest that the easiest thing to do it would be to write a signature without, without passing compare, and then somehow call this one. Wouldn't it be a good idea? Sort of the, right? So do you want to say how to, how to do it, or do you want to type it? Um, can I pass the spoon off? <laughs> no. It's up to me to pass this spoon. You don't know C++ at all? Um, I kind of uh, forgot what you said. I was looking at the code. There. What I said is that we're trying to write a version of min, which instead of comparison, which is passed to it, will be using less than this operator. OK? So how would we go about doing it? It's a very simple question. Again, I suggest that first we say template. It's always good to say template. Well, let me, let me actually talk a little bit. There are two ways of doing it, the right way and the wrong way. People who will do it the wrong way will attempt to use default template argument here. That's a bad idea, guys. Don't do it. First of all, it requires that you, you know some parts of C++, which you're not even supposed to know. 
Second of all, it will make it harder in the future to use this mean. This is why the standard library has not one unified interface, but two interfaces. Right? Let, let me explain. So some of you will not see it right away, but nevertheless, let me say that. Sometimes you want to get a pointer to function mean, right? A pointer to function. So in order to get a pointer to function mean, you will say, you will say mean angle bracket, some kind of type, say int, and some type of a comparison thing, say uh, std greater. That will turn min into a max, right? Angle bracket. So this invocation gives you a pointer. Remember that thing called pointers to functions. But we want to be able, just to get simple min, which is we want to say min angle bracket int angle bracket. No, 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 there are no parentheses. I mean, don't blame me. I didn't say greater paren paren. We don't want an object, we want a type there. So you're of course right. We have the problem with the typing machine. Yes? Yeah, 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 often. What was that? The second one will be just mean int. Right? So we need to have mean which would allow us to write the second one. It's handy, it's convenient, and by the way, it is required by the standard. So now you have to try to help us to write it. The man with the spoon. Okay. So I would recommend that you write it after the first one. It's my third day. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, you were born four days ago? Okay. Look, one, one thing, guys. One, one thing which sort of every programmer needs is to being relaxed. You're going from now on, it's your third day. Let me tell you, from now on for the next 40 years, you're going to screw up. You're going to write bad code. I do all the time. I just did remember. I forgot to put angle brackets within. They're standing in front of the room being recorded. And Ahmed kindly corrected me. So you should not have, I'm actually dead serious. You know, we should be very relaxed about, yeah, you know, I, I do something wrong every day. Try. So I'm trying to just eliminate or take out compare from the min function. That's a good plan. That's so, a good plan. Um, let's do template and yeah. then angle bracket type name T. That's very good. That's what I would write. And then <laughs> Let's put a comma. I wouldn't put a comma. No, because <laughs> what are you trying to do? Okay, so then let's just, let's just angle bracket it off. That's very good. Uh, can do the inline. I've never seen the inline um, word before. Now you, you have seen it. Yeah. Well, I have seen it. I'll look yes. it up later. Um, and then let's do const. Yes? T ampersand min const. T ampersand A, um, and then just const that stuff. Yes, 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 B. Yes. Um, and then we can do the close parentheses. Very good. And then let's, yeah, okay. Um, and then can we do if? No, we don't need to do if. We want to use the other guy. Oh, that guy. That guy. You never want to invent what you already did. You just want to write a wrapper which uses the, the more general version. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, let's do 
Just do return. Wonderful. Yes, let's do return. Return min, and then we'll do a b. Very good. And then we'll use the functor. What's the functor? The functor is greater, right? No. No, 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 no. It's very close. Greater we did just because, you know, I was trying to show off how to turn min into max. The natural ordering is less than. Therefore, the functor is less. Yeah, it's called less. Yeah. So you say, see? Yeah, yeah, you do need T. He always forgets. The typing is not perfect. You know, we're working on voice recognition here. Uh, sometimes things, right? Do you guys see the general? This is, you know, this is a general technique. You know, whether we will write sort, whether we will write other things, we will always do something like that. We'll write a general version, and then we will just write a wrapper uh, to do, let me, I just turned off. Uh, so, right? So now, of course, the question here will come to a very interesting question. Now you are free. Pass the spoon. Random. Ah, okay. So now let us try to think about how we wrote min. Huh? How should we do max? And let me tell you, this is a very shameful thing. This mean will not work. It will not be compiled. This mean. Why wouldn't it work? No, there are parentheses after the left. Because we need an object, not a type. It will compile. That's the difference. This here requires an object. This is a function call. Guys, this is not a template class. This is a function call. So the, the thing is a pointer. No, it's a function object. OK, here apparently we have difficulty. People do not see the difference between classes and objects. OK, you see this. It's, let us look at the, this thing, just this thing. Yeah. These are types. This template is written in terms of two types. Type T, which contains data which we compare. Could be int, it could be double, it could be anything. We, of course, expect it to be something on which we could define strict weak ordering. So we expect it to be regular or at least semi-regular. All right? Uh, now. We also have a type, type, compare. Compare is a type. Now, this type, why do we use, anybody knows why we use type to do that? What is, we could have passed a pointer. So the compiler can check for us, so we don't do something silly. Even with a pointer, compiler will check for us. So why do we do it? There are two reasons why we do that. Specify the argument to establish the signature. No, no, no. There is real reasons. Real reasons. There could be two reasons in for doing things, which are real reasons. One called functionality. Another one is called performance. Right. You know, the reason we are doing it is to make it fast. Right. If we were passing a pointer here, if compare was a pointer, what would we do? No, we would do a function call. Through a pointer, that's, a, that's what machine does. It takes a pointer, goes to something, saves, registers, does whatever. Is it fast? No, it's terribly slow, especially if this mean, as likely is the case, sits inside in a loop and you do it a gazillion times, right? This is bad. This is very, very important thing to remember. The reason we're using all this stuff is to assure that things are fast. The second reason, of course, 
that making it a type would allow it to have state. Pointers to functions have no state. But let us ignore that for now. Let us just, how many of you actually understand how to write less than? Raise your hands. OK. Let us write le less than. Who has this one? Write less than. Let us implement standard class called less. A standard function. It's not a function. It's a class. It's a template class which takes, OK, which takes some type and defines a class which will do less than on it. Not a function call. That's the whole, I mean, our whole point is to avoid function call. We use type system to pass to the compiler information so that the stuff could be inlined at compile time. So you're lo looking for a functor that does <coughs> less? Which does less. We want to write a functor which does less. And I'm going to do some, I'm going to cheat. We're going to write something which will work for everything we do, but it's not quite standard conforming. Right? But, so let's try to do that. So template type name T. Very good. Could you venture a guess? What, is, what do we need for type T? What's the requirement on type T? Uh, street, uh, weak ordering? No. Total, total, totally ordered. Very good. Very good. T is totally ordered. Very good. So classless. I wouldn't say class. Struct. I would say struct. Why would I say struct? Anybody? Stable line. No, it's actually, it has no state. There's nothing private. It's going to have only one thing. Uh, Very good. Structless. Embrace. Open. Embrace. Um, op bool operator. Yes. Um, open close. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yes. This, yes, like this. Yes, sorry. Yes. yes. And then um, uh, open parent. Just a little thing. Is it? A constant operator or not constant operator? It should be a constant. Why? It doesn't need to modify it. It couldn't because there's no state. Right. So let's make it constant. Very good. Um, let's make it. We have to say const. He says const. No, 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 no. But there's something. There's something missing there. Yes. Yeah, so we need to take in uh, two of type T. How would we take them? Which way would we take them? Constref. That's a good way of taking them. Because we don't want to waste time copying them, right? And then return A uh, less than B. And of course, there is a gross, terrible mistake in this code. I tell you, it will cause such harm you will know. Yes, semicolon after the struct. Never forget that, right? So, observe what it is. What we do, we create a type, which I, I have no business. Say share screen, whomever it is, accept him. I mean, we have no secrets, uh, right? So now, when we pass, could, could I could I torture you for a little while longer? Let us now show them how to use this guy. Let us pass it to some function. For example, if you want to sort something, you have a and b begin and end pointers to an array, and you want to sort it with less than. How would you call it? So that would be uh, std sort. Yes. Um, Open. A dot begin. <coughs> a dot end. 
Um, Let's assume these are ints. Ints. Sure. Okay. So less um, of uh, less templated on in. Um, now stop. 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 Guys, what is it? What is this from L till the angle bracket? What is it? Type. type. Do we need a type? No. Because it's a function call. We need an object. How do we create an object of a type? Um, open, close. We say open, parent, close, parent. It creates an object. How big is this object, by the way? Anybody know? Yes, it's empty, but sadly enough, guys, let me tell you a great secret. There are no quite empty things. Empty things are still one byte. It has no state because C doesn't want us to allocate two objects at the same address. And if you have zero size, you will be able to just pile objects on top of each other. So you do use one byte on the stack during a function call. Does it matter? No, not at all. It, it's, it's just nothing is done with it. It's not initialized. So what we are able, we're not put, passing a function pointer. That's the important thing. We're passing an empty object, which just carries this information. So function object is a very important technique to allow you, especially, to pass things to template algorithms. Where is our template algorithm down there? Things like that. Uh, no, 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 no. The, this one. You see how we passed it here? So this is why we need call and, uh, we need open paren, close paren. Everybody follows? I mean, ask if you don't. This is all right. Yes? You will still need uh, an indirection to call the function, right? Which function? There is no function. The, the operator call? It's not a function. Observe what happens. Let us go up. This is not a function call there. This is just A less than B. It will literally be inlined at compile time. Is it good to be inlined at compile time? It is very good, guys. Because instead of a function call, you're going to have how many instructions? Yes. Say one, yeah. One instruction, which is most likely going to be done in parallel with some other instruction. It is free. Right? Function calls are not. Right? So this is, we will see that it's a wonderful technique which we could use for other things, but you have to to sort of once and for all accustom yourself with function objects, Arnab apparently accustomed himself, except for semicolons at the end. Uh, right? So it's, it's a very, very useful technique. And there are, of course, a bunch of function objects in the standard library, things like less than, greater, less or equal, and things like that. But you could define your own. For example, if you have some record and you want to do sorting or min or max on the second field. You could write your own thing, which will just compare the second field of this struct. It will be in line. It will not be a function call. Right? And thing to remember is faster the computers get, slower the function calls are, because they break sort of the, it's, it's, a, it's a very bad jump. So uh, max. <coughs> Pass it. I have another question. Yes. Don't we need to have template parameters to mean in the second field? Where? In this. Oh, the second mean. So let us go. No. Why not? You see? Yeah, okay, answer. Template argument deduction. The beautiful thing about using template functions 
You don't need to tell it what its argument types are. The compiler tells it. Compiler knows. Does compiler know what's the type of A's? Yes? B? Yes? So it tells it. This is the beauty. And you do, you, compiler does type inferencing for you. It does everything. You, you, just, you, know, you just call min. In some sense, the advantage is that, and this is why you have been getting away without knowing any of that stuff, that if you just say min 5.3, it just does the correct thing. STD min will do correct thing. You do not need to say which min. It will figure out. Did you pass this point? Ah, OK. Let us try to, to see uh, how we do max. And let me, let me give you a warning. That's a hard one because I got it wrong in STL. Yes? I got it wrong in STL. And I realized after STL was accepted as an international standard, whatever it is, that I made a mistake. It didn't take me much. It took me a few years, but I figured out. So I started this campaign on changing it to the correct one. Campaign has been going on right now for close to 20 years without any success. So the one in the standard is still broken. So let us see why. I, by the way, I didn't tell you what's in the standard was the correct one. So let us try to write max. Um, I would just use the uh, call the min function with greater. You would do that. And so why would you then even have such a thing? Well, you, there is an answer. So your question is, why would it even have a function like max? Yeah. The, there is an answer. And if somebody wants to use a different compare function? No. For that, we also have, you could pass any function here. Right? We already have a thing which takes an arbitrary compare function. It could take less, it could take greater. Of course, the, the answer which I was looking is that, you know, we want to provide what's convenient for the customer and people do know about max. So when they say max, it should somehow work. The question, what should it do? And what I am trying to, to sort of point you to the fact that, you know, it seems that max and mean are identical, sort of that max is just mean with greater, like mean is mean with less. Okay, let us think about it a little deeper. Obviously, it's a deep question since I got it wrong and I thought for 20 years before I made a mistake about this thing. Remember, we said that functions have to work together naturally. And we also said that you know, mean and max and say sort should work together naturally, remember? Now let's try to write this function which I've been threatening for quite a while called sort2, the thing which takes two things and sorts them. It's not a difficult function. Do you think you could lead the sort2 attack? Okay. No, 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 this is good. It's all related stuff. So write a sort function? To sort function, which sorts two things. Uh, what are these things? Anybody could suggest? You could suggest. Iterators? I, I wouldn't do iterators. I would, would do the most general idea of sorting two things. I mean two things which can be compared. Yes. But how would I pass them? References to references. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Okay, let's let's do it. Okay. Sure. Uh, template type name T. Always works. Inline. Uh, there is a line missing. Let's put missing line with slash slash. Bill will tell us later what is there. Uh, requires T to be totally ordered. Uh, not necessarily. Could you sort with less than total ordering? Uh, 
partial order. <clears throat> we went through that last time. Partial order. Weeks, tweak, weak ordering. Yeah. So let's say whatever we said upstairs, let's say here. And that means that we will need to get this ordering somehow. It means that we have something missing on the previous slide. Right. Uh, inline? No, no, no. Before inline, the line with template. Uh, the compare function? Compare, not a function. Compare type. Thank you. Very good. It's the same. They're all the same, guys. This is something name compare. And what will it return? Void. That's, that's a good idea. Because what else? A pair of objects. A pair. Well, you know, sort traditionally, the preferred way of sorting is in place. You could always obtain, as we will see later, uh, the, your version by doing what? Go take a further. But let us do the most basic one because it's very simple and we'll use all the components we already developed. So void sort uh, t ref a, mm -hmm. comma t ref b uh, function Compare CMP. Uh, Very good. Close the parent start curly brace. If CMP A comma B, uh, if CMP B comma A, uh, uh, close it. Then <coughs> curly brace. Uh, let's swap. Oh, you don't really need a curly brace, but since curly braces are free. Let give him a curly brace. Yeah, we just swap. Yes. Or if we are, want to be really industrial strength, we will use standard swap instead of our swap. He got, see. But we could have used ours because it's identical. Right? Anybody wants to argue against it? You want to argue? You can argue. Uh, you should use. Uh, or let ADL pick up argument kind of look up. What, um, what, what? In case the user of the types, <coughs> the type has a swap <coughs> namespace basically specialized for that type, you want to pick it up. How would you do that? By removing standard. By removing. Qualified call to swap, so ADL lookup will. But then it wouldn't pick up standard. Yes, you have to do using names or using namespace standard at the beginning of the function. Well, let's do it. Ignore him. <laughs> uh, well, it's what he said is correct, but but let, let us do that for the time being. Very good. So uh, let's. I'll stay with you for a little while longer. Uh, so we did this. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, what I would like to have, and observe, he was clever. There's something he was tempted to do, but didn't do it. You didn't notice, but I did. Tell him what you wanted to do first. I wanted to compare the other way. And that would be not quite right. You see, you cannot, you have to be careful to assure that you're not going to swap when they're equal. Right? And he took care of that. I was waiting to pounce, but couldn't. He caught me before, before I did. So this is very good. We got that. But what now I want, I want the following invariant. I want after I do this, we should probably call it sort two, by the way, because otherwise, you know, all kind of bad things will happen because we only have sort with two arguments, which are iterators and which sort, whatever. So sort two is a much better name. Uh, so we have sort two. What we want, if we do sort two, after we do sort two, A contains min and B contain max. Everybody agrees with that? 
sort of, there is this natural thing. If you have a sorted thing, where is the min? The first guy, where is the max? The last one. Is it natural? It is natural. But we have to assure that it works even when these things are equivalent. We, because what Pulpri did, he wrote a stable sort. Sort 2 is stable. It's not going to swap equivalent values. Remember what stability is? It means that the equivalent values are not going to change their relative order. Right? And he assured that. Now, what we want to do is to assure that after we do a stable sort like that, the first guy will remain in the first position, the last guy, the max guy will be, right? And if we do max the way you want it, it's not going to work, right? Because it will, both min and max, when they're equivalent, will return A. Do you see that? Right? And that, that's, I'm repeating, it took me years to realize, that you want min and max to do different things because they're both of them useful. Min, we decided, when there are equivalent things, will return the first. What's the opposite? We return the last. Pulpit, could we do it? Are you ready for max? If they're equivalent, you want to return, if they are, of course, you know, if they are not equivalent, if they are not equal, you want to return whichever one is greater. If they're equivalent, you want to return B. In case of mean, we return A. In case of max, we return B. Because that gives us, now we could have it whichever way we want. If we want one semantics, we could always get it with mean. If we want the other semantics, look, if I, we will see. Eventually, we'll generalize it on a bunch of things, not just two. When we generalize it on a bunch of things, sometimes I want to find the first mean. Sometimes I want to find the last mean. And the same for max. Now, we could make mean and max do the opposite things. They would be finding first in case of mean and last in case of max for equivalent values. Yeah. Too complicated? You have to think. Especially when Balprit is writing the code, you will see. Could we write it next to our code for min? So that. One question. Is that the only reason for writing max? Because um, the readability wise, also, you want to write max. Because you want to. For the readability, also, to be able to kind of. If you're comparing for the max. And if you write a code as min, it's going to be going to throw off somebody, right? Well, no, 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 no. It will do. We are just changing. It will return max. No, I, I understand that. But the name of the function is min. No, it will be max. We're going to. Yeah, yes. It will be max. Yes. I understand that. But we were arguing that why do we need to even write max? So one of the reasons is, is this stable. stable. I agreed with that. I agreed with your argument. Yes. A simple, naive people should get max because that's what they want. But now, what I'm saying, and that's, you know, when I was making a decision, I just said, that's the only difference I'm going to have. And now I'm saying, that eventually led me to see that there is slight irregularity. Right? And the naive user will never even know about what happens to equal guys. So this is for sophisticated guys like you who write complicated you know, relevance algorithms. You, know. you need to understand fine things of programming. Naive user, apparently they have been using my stuff for 20 years without noticing. The standard committee, every time I talk, and I talk only to one member of the standard committee, happens to be the man. So he always says, what does he say? Anybody know? Paul knows. No, it's not what he says. He says, Alex, you are too 
theoretical. That's what he said. That's what he says. Oh, Alex, you're too theoretical. I guess I am. So, because I pay attention to these little details. But you will see, eventually, what I claim to show you, that things like that will matter, all of these decisions we make now. Uh, template type name, T type name compare. Could I suggest something? Why don't you tell him copy and paste min? Because you know, it's, we could reuse a lot of it. Uh, for example, we could reuse first line, second line, third line. On the fourth line, we change. Replace min with max. max. Right. And then we have to think. And then just swap B and A and C and. Ah, uh, no. You see, that's the tricky part. It's not of CMP. Yes, very good. You see, we suddenly become a little bit different. We're saying now, if they're greater, or B is greater or equal, uh, less, uh, of course, we need to. We need, we need to swap these guys. Right? So it's not which crawled out of some place. Right? And then return. Oh, he did it? Yes. Go just much faster. You type faster than I think. It's frightening. Uh, OK? And obviously, do we need to, to discuss how to write a version Without passing compare? No. You see, the same way as with min. OK. We're doing a good clip, guys. I want to do something now which is a little bit. Want to stay in charge for a little while longer? Or you want to pass this book? OK, stay, stay with me. OK? So we, we, we now could do two things, yeah? min. But of course, you know, when you do, like, you want to find an item with smallest price, say. You don't want just two. You want an interface which allows you to take many, 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 many things, as many as you like, and find the minimum. And there is a standard function, by the way, in the standard, which does that. But we're going to write it, nevertheless. It's called min underscore element. Okay. So let us let us first what do you think it takes? How many? Good idea. Take two why does it take two iterators? It needs to start somewhere. It needs to stop someplace. That's a good thing. What does it return? It returns the value type of the iterator. No it doesn't returns the iterator itself. Why? I could have returned. I mean, you know, we could say, well, let's return a value. So why not? There could be extra data along the key which we may want to use. For example, but it's not the main reason. You might want to update the value. Thank you. That's the main reason. Because usually, what do you do? I'm a manager. I want to look the worst performing guy and then fire him. I don't want his value. I want to you know, handle it to him. I want the iterator. Do, do you see my point? I mean, you very often want to do things with, with, the, you know, with the thing. That's only one reason. There's another reason. Sometimes, yes, yes. Look at the guys around him, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. There is another reason. You see, it's a trickier reason. Yes, yes. The range might be empty. You see, they happen to be empty. When you write a code, of course, you assume that it's not empty. 
but then there will be a case when it's empty and there will be self too, right? So you, you always have to assume that there is, go, I mean, sort of the ranges could be empty, right? Like the first iterator, do you agree? That's why, and if it's empty, what do you return? If for iterators, if it's a value, then it's tough. There is a solution, but not very practical. If your type contains the smallest element, maybe returning that would be a solution. But there is no general way of finding such an element anyways. You assume a lattice structure, which not all the totally ordered things have. Right? So you, you might not do that. So in general, let us, let us OK. So Balfrid will lead us through the design. Uh, template. I think it knows. Type name I. Typo. He doesn't make typos. I don't know. Just I? You don't need anything else? A compare function. Compare type names, compare. And, um, Put slash slash temporarily. We'll need to figure out what I and compare. Ah, do. Okay. It's sad, but you have to figure out. Of course, compiler doesn't need it, but there might be this guy, the programmer, who wants to use it. So we need to. OK, but let's write it first. So it needs to return i. Yes. And uh, sort. Oh, what do you mean, sort? Oh, sorry, min. Min. And i first, i last. Min element. I first, comma, I last. Right. And compare CMP. And then yeah, start the function. Start the function. Here is the tricky bit. Yes. So how do we do it? So I mean, first we should make sure that the range is not empty. How would we do that? First, not to last. I would actually do the other way, just to get rid of the empty case once and for all. In the beginning. You, you, you don't see what I'm suggesting? So just compare that. So have the base case at the top. Yeah, so that you know and you know. You don't have to trace what, what to return all the way. Right. So if first equals equals last, then return last. Yes. Or first. Observe. They are the same at that point. So you know. This is this is the one on which I spent, you know. Months of my life hesitating <laughs> which one to, to return. Uh, well, you decided. Okay. He, why should it be last? Because in the other case, if, there, if it's not <coughs> the same, then first is a, is a meaning. Like it has a. Yes. But we could return first. It's, it's correct. Okay. I buy his argument. Last is. Really, do, do you see what, what Nick says? This is a good point. He says that last is a marker known to us with, before we know whether it's empty or not. We know that it goes past the end. So when you read it, returning, so what you said, OK. Yes. Yes, 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 we know. Yes, yes, very good. You took me out of my. Misery after many decades of hesitating. Yes, I agree. This is better. So, okay. 
uh, then we can define a temporary min. Which is going to be what? Which is going to be? I, oh, I, I meant which value and the type is I, yes? I min underscore EL. New element, yeah. Is that a good? Was first. Yeah. That's the best candidate. And then just iterate the while first not equals fast. I wouldn't do that. I would immediately know. What do I know at this point? The first is not equal to last. Maybe do a do while. No. Listen to him. He is occasionally right. I worked with him. It's the, old, the other alternative. <laughs> you could move. You see, after you did this, you know, you, you, you first is, you don't need to compare him. He's the running thing. So plus, plus, plus. Yeah. Yes, very good. Maybe put it inside while plus, plus, first, not equal. Yes, now, of course, this is f while first is not equal, this is a good guard. Because we do not know anymore whether they're equal or not. We're not going to repeat. So why not just do while plus, plus, first, not equal? Because I think I already uh, fumed about using plus plus inside expressions. Because I don't want the other guy who's going to maintain this code to introduce bugs. Do not, while you can write everything in C in a single line, you don't have to. Right? Sort of. I also urge people not to use post increment for that very same reason. Sort of. It's just, you know, yes, you're making it longer, but, you know, Param is reading it now. He knows very clearly what is going on. If you write an expression, he will have to sit there and scratch his head. Am I right? I mean, because he writes, he's not accustomed to plus pluses. He writes mostly Python. So he'll have to think out post increment, pre increment. Do that. Sort of. It's more. And now we can just use the sort to function that we had defined. Well, we could do simpler than that. We can, but we don't have to. We for sure cannot use it on value. We could maybe use it on iterators. So sort through will actually go and swap the value which is not what you want to do, plus you might not even be able to. Yes, you shouldn't sort because, you know, you're not going to come up with good sort like in one thing. No, no, do not write the sort rule. Yeah, so while first not equals last, if uh, min, uh, uh, so min element equals no, 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 never mind equals. What do you need to do now? I need to find out. So compare. If the next element who comes is smaller than smaller. Then we should do. So say that. So it's CMP min EL. No. What did we say? First comma min EL. <coughs> yes. No. No, you're comparing. This wouldn't compile. These are pointers, iterators, yes, of some kind. Star. This is all right. This is all right. It's just <laughs> so if this, then then update my uh, min element to first. And then what we need to do? There's one more thing to do in the loop. Increment the first. Increment the first. And we are almost done except for? Return. Very good. We actually got it. So we have to guard against the first element being larger than the last. Why should we guard? 
What if Iranians were the first is larger than last? First is larger than last, and eventually, well, last we will never even look. OK, uh, step back. Apparently, we need to talk about iterator conventions. First and last are maybe bad names, <laughs> right? Except that's what they are. This is very hard to change because I call the code and all everywhere. Uh, Paul and I tried to change them. But apparently, well, you guys don't read our books, so you don't know. So the, uh, Last actually doesn't mean last. Last means one after last element, the guard. Right? Sort of in order to define a sequence, you need to point past the last. Why? Why did I choose that? I could have pointed to the first and last, but then I would have been in trouble. Why did I do it? Because I was cool or empty range. You want to be able to deal with empty ranges when you return them, whatever. And if you point to first and real last, then if you point to the same place, that indicates a range of one element. There is no way to do zero. Right? For example, if I look at the range, I want to eventually we will look at algorithms for partitioning. We want to partition good people from bad people. After we do the partition, we return a pointer which sort of separates good from the so you know there will be first, last, and middle, the middle which partitions between the, the, the first bad or the first good element, we'll have to discuss that, right? But it could be, the middle could be equal to first, or middle could be equal to last. There could be no good elements at all, or no bad elements. Like A9, we don't have bad employees, so, right? So it could be both ways. We need for our algorithm to be able to return an empty range, right? So, and we shall see this is the first such thing. But you know, every, everywhere in C++, or you, this is the standard convention. Some people, even in the world of Java and Python, start slowly realizing that maybe it has something to do with mathematics, not with uh, C++. But it will take decades before people fully, fully realize that. That is, you have to always pass, pass the end. You need the world of mathematically no, things known as semi-open intervals. Right? Mathematicians, anybody remembers how they denote it? Mathematicians write it like so. They write bracket here for i. Then they write j. And then they write this. All right? So these, these are good things. So, Last is never the case. If we're returning last in this particular case, it's obvious the range was empty. This was Nick's point. That's the only case when we will return the last. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying, maybe I missed something. What if yes? uh, the caller caller switch last? Ah. That would be tough. Uh, the machine might melt. <laughs> yes, and what could you do? You cannot. Right. Let us think about this. We will get in a second because there is a line missing. A line missing, right here. Well, Prit, help me there. What are I? These are so. What kind of iterators? Like good iterators? Bad iterators? Forward. Forward iterators. Why are they not input iterators? Some people would not understand, but he does. Let him answer, and then I'll explain. Yeah. 
not changing anything. Yes, therefore input iterators should work. Anybody knows what's the difference between forward iterator and input iterator? Algorithmically. Silence in the room. <laughs> okay, try. Uh, you can only iterate, or you can only do reference a forward iterator or an input iterator once. And once it's incremented, the value no longer exists. Yes. In other words, very good. In other words, what happens is that input iterators describe algorithms which go through the water, through the stream, once. It's like they're reading stuff from the wire. Imagine the values come from the wire. Will this work? No, because this guy will disappear. You couldn't store the old position for if it's true input iterator. That is, forward iterator indeed requires whatever, sort of how do you know that it's something like forward iterator? Because we go only forward. We don't do random jumps. But we also store a pointer, the iterator, to some previous element. Therefore, the things which go through the wire will not work, the previous value of the wire. We will encounter algorithms where you do not need it. So yes, it is correct. It is forward iterator. Let me. Ah, there is a good news, guys. The food is coming. It's not here yet, but it's, it will be here. At least some food is here. So. Uh, OK? Now, the, just while we're waiting for food, how would we implement max elements? Obviously, it's not implemented correctly in the standard, because I implemented it. But how would we do it? What's the difference between mean and max? The not in the CID. Yes, yes, yes. Again, we will assure that we run all the way for equal elements. This will give us all the choices. And what else we need to do? We need to provide wrappers when the compare defaults. Yes, we will not do that. Yes? We have a problem back in max. We do. OK. Where do we have a problem? Well, just let's think about this. Let's say a. Let's look at that first comparison. If A is <coughs> less than B, it's, it's greater than or equal to B, it should return. we shouldn't return B. If A is not less, uh, the, no, 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 it should be. If, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Paul. See, at least we have one guy here who thinks. Uh, not me. Uh, the best fix is to actually swap. I would just swap. Put the comparison back the way it was in min and yeah. swap the two returns. Can I try that one? If. Uh, uh, just negate the same piece so that we want. If B is less, only then do we return A. If B is greater or equal, we return B. That works. That works. See? That shows you that experience counts. All of us missed it. Right? Very good. Thank you. Feeling something. Uh -huh. uh, Ryan always feels something. But uh, he was quiet. OK, thank you. Just, just change the, the, the negations uh, of the original one. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But same as the, the, the mean, except uh, instead of same PBA, you get the negation of same PBA. Yes. Let's stick to that because we don't need negation. Less operation. Right? OK. So let me see. The food is sort of, let me, okay. Guys, just, I apologize. 
you listen. Are we ready or not? Thank you. We are ready. Okay?